The Pig Man by Paul Zindel. Please be sure you're on the page just before page one, entitled The Oath. Being of sound mind and body on this 15th day of April in our sophomore year at Franklin High School, let it be known that Lorraine Jensen and John Conlon have decided to record the facts, and only the facts, about our experiences with Mr. Angelo Pignotti. Miss Rain, the cricket, is watching us at every moment because she's the librarian at Franklin High and actually thinks we're using her typewriter to copy a book report for our retarded English teacher. The truth and nothing but the truth until this memorial epic is finished. So help us God. Signed, John Conlon and Lorraine Jensen. Chapter one, page one. Now, I don't like school, which you might say is one of the factors that got us involved with this old guy we named the pig man. Actually, I hate school, but then again, most of the time I hate everything. I used to really hate school when I first started at Franklin High. I hated it so much the first year they called me the bathroom bomber. Other kids got elected GO president and class secretary and lab squad captain, but I got elected the bathroom bomber. They called me that because I used to set off bombs in the bathroom. I set off 23 bombs before I just didn't feel like doing it anymore. The reason I never got caught was because I used to take a tin can, that's a firecracker, as if you didn't know, and mold a piece of clay around it so it'd hold a candle attached to the fuse. One of those skinny little birthday candles. Then I'd light the thing and it would take about eight minutes before the fuse got lit. I always put the bombs in the first floor, first floor boys john right behind one of the porcelain unmentionables where no one could see it. Then I'd go off to my next class. No matter where I was in the building, I could hear the blast. If I got all involved, though, I'd forget I'd lit the bomb, and even then I'd be surprised when it went off. Of course, I was never as surprised as the poor guys who were in the boys' john on the first floor sneaking a cigarette, because the boys' john is right next to the dean's office, and a whole flock of Gestapo would race in there and blame them. Sure, they didn't do it, but it's pretty hard to say you're innocent when you're caught with a lung full of rich, mellow tobacco smoke. When the dean catches you smoking, it really may be hazardous to your health. I smoked one with a recessed filter myself. After my bomb avocation, <clears throat> excuse me, I became the organizer of the super colossal fruit roll. You could only do this on Wednesdays because that was the only day they sold old apples in the cafeteria. Sick, undernourished, antique apples. They sold old oranges on Fridays, but they weren't as good because they don't make as much noise when you roll them. But on Wednesdays, when I knew there was going to be a substitute teaching one of the classes, I'd pass the word at lunch, and all the kids in that class would buy these scrawny apples. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we'd take them to class and wait for the right moment, like when the substitute was writing on the blackboard. You couldn't depend on a substitute to write on the blackboard, though, because usually they just told you to take a study period so they didn't have to do any work and you could just sit at the desk reading the New York Times. But you could depend on the substitute to be mildly retarded. So I'd pick out the right moment and clear my throat quite loudly, <clears throat> which was a signal for everyone to get the apples out. Then I gave this phony sneeze <clears throat> that meant to hold them down near the floor. When I whistled, <whistles> that was the signal to roll them. Did you ever hear a herd of buffalo stampeding? 34 scrawny, undernourished apples rolling up the aisles sounded just like a herd of buffalo stampeding. Every one of the fruit rolls was successful, except for the time we had a retired postman for general science, hour five. We were supposed to study incandescent lamps, but he spent the period telling us about commemorative stamps. He was so enthusiastic about the old days at the post office. I just didn't have the heart to give the signals, and the kids were a little put out because they all got stuck with old apples. But I gave up all that kid stuff now. Now that I'm a sophomore, the only thing I do now that is faintly criminal is write on desks. Like right this minute, I feel like writing something on the nice polished table here. And since the cricket is down at the other end of the library showing some four-eyed dimwit how to use the encyclopedias, I'm going to do it. Help me! A rotten science teacher is giving me a drug to change me into a teeny weeny mosquito. Please help me. Please help me. Now that I've artistically expressed myself, we might as well get this cursing thing over with too. I was a little annoyed at first since I was the one who suggested writing this thing because I couldn't stand the miserable look on Lorraine's face ever since the pig man died. She looked a little bit like a St. Bernard that had lost its keg around its neck, 
but since she agreed to work on this, she's gotten a little livelier, livelier and more opinionated. One of her opinions is that I shouldn't curse. Not in a memorial epic. Let's face it, I said, everyone curses. She finally said I could curse if it was excruciatingly necessary by going like this. I don't know how to pronounce that. Now that isn't too bad an idea because leaves it to the imagination and most people have a worse imagination than I have. So I'll figure I'll go like if it's a mild curse, like the kind you hear in the movies when everyone makes believe they're morally violated but have really gotten the thrill of a lifetime. If it's going to be revolting curse, I'll just put a three in front of it, like three, and then you'll know it's the raunchiest curse you can think of. Just now, I'd better explain why we call Miss Reagan the cricket. Like I told you, she's the librarian at Franklin and is letting us type this thing on her typewriter. Excuse me, her quiet typewriter, which isn't quiet at all. But there aren't many kids in seventh period study because most of them cut it and the others get excused early because our school is overcrowded. It's only kids like Lorraine and me that get stuck with 7th period study because we have to stay around for an 8th period class called Problems in American Democracy. And if you think having problems in American democracy is a fun way to end the day, you need a snug fitting straitjacket. Anyway, Miss Rain is a little on the fat side, but that doesn't stop her from wearing these tight skirts which make her nylon stockings rub together when she walks, so she makes a scratchy sound. That's why the kids call her the cricket. If she taught woodshop or gym, nobody'd really know she makes that sound. But she's the librarian, and it's so quiet, you can hear every move she makes. Lorraine is panting to get at the typewriter now, so I'm going to let her before she has a heart attack.